get an idea. Bit rocky, but it's Portugal. It's a lot of rock in Portugal. I'm hoping there's a something more suited for a camp up the hill. Morning of day two. Ticking along okay. Tried to book one of the locks to be opened for just after lunch today. But I couldn't get the website to accept my booking on my phone. So I'm going to paddle up to the lock. And I'm hoping there's a walk around. Don't book the dam. I got out over where that um shiny steel gantry is just a bit further along then I walked up the road got onto the bridge got a walk across the bridge and then down to uh, underneath that bridge Got my oar, I've left nothing behind, Roger. Fuck it, I've got to go and look. Now I've said it. <coughs> ah, I've left that behind. Oh. Thanks, Rocky. Oh, I've had worse crashes. I think it I work better that way. Oh, right. Not bad at all.
My understanding is that the inlet ahead over there is the last opportunity to land before Valeria Dam Lock, whatever we're calling it. I've booked a guest house in this cove on booking.com. A bit further up that estuary and let uh, so that's the potential campground and it looks like it's got bathroom facilities. The grass looks five star to me for Portugal in the summertime. So that is a dream spot to camp the night. I guess you'd have to wait for a few more people to go home. Could be a cafe behind it. Could be my guest house. Wait, pay up. I think we got a dam. Oh, oh, we got a boat coming out. So, actually, I'm in quite a good position because he can't run me over here. So, these boats aren't shabby, they're, they're sleep on jobs, I reckon and then it's a cruise up the river. They're looking at me thinking, what is this idiot at? Please be someone there. So, I'm not sure whether we open at 10 o'clock. Hey! There's a guy there, so I'm so grateful. Gate front going up. Training cats and dogs on me now, so you might want to put a jumper on or a uh, waterproof. That's what you want if you're a professional, a waterproof. Oh, I'll just put the gate opens and off you go. All the places I've baked. This is a new one. Hey, here we go. I could get under there. I presume. Okay. That must be the go beat. Oh yeah, I've got a green light. Okay. Abrigad. Abrigad, thanks so much.
Thanks for not killing me. <laughs> there we go. We're off on our way. This sounds like the drum and bass boat. I think they do take they do take crashing kayaks pretty seriously, these guys. I haven't felt anyone putting pressure on me or anything. Everyone's super cautious, which is exactly what we want. I've seen this boat before. So he's definitely getting up and down the river faster than I am. for a nice lunch in a place called Chua at the train station so there is a trendy nice restaurant right on the riverbank with an awful lot of customers but if you walk across the train tracks there is effectively the station cafe which also does nice food but while I had lunch the winds picked up in the valley it doesn't matter which way the river twists or turns, the wind is still coming straight at me. It feels like I'm doing sort of 1.5 kilometers an hour at the moment. But that has to be has to be offset by the fact that I did have two super box beers for lunch with my uh, toaster mister. So it might be a bit in the mind, but morning, uh, day seven. Stayed in Pinhao Pin Pin last night, which is right down back down there. So yesterday was like one lock in the morning, and then uh, 20 kilometres into a head <laughs> headwind all day. Obviously, the strength of the wind got greater as the afternoon arrived so I kept looking for like a sort of secluded camp spot between obviously coming into Pinyao nothing really that I thought yeah that, that's one suitable for me and two isn't really private I mean all the land is private but there's like private land being cared for and private land not being cared for so when I choose a camp spot I'd normally go for a bit of land that looks unloved uh, it doesn't sit right to go and camp on someone's uh, olive grove or in their vines if that's a, if that's their business So this is the ramp at Fog Ulcer. Looks alright, doesn't it? Okay. So I walked to the pad area up the hill. Tied my kayak up with a padlock. Still there when I got back, which was nice. I would say I mean, Portugal isn't like the crime capital of Europe by any means, and the countryside certainly isn't, but it's still got to be reasonably sensible and not ask for it. Padaria's back up there on the hill with the sign, with the writing on the side. So, kayak was out of sight, but I uh, had a nice lunch. It's two o'clock now. I've got a booking for the lock, regular royal lock, uh, six kilometres ahead, got three hours. Uh, 
when the winds I don't know, yesterday was windy all day but that hour I've had lunch <laughs> the wind's picked up so I'm sure I'll be fine but six kilometers three hours two kilometers an hour that is about the speed I've managed well yesterday on average nine hours yesterday to 20 kilometers yeah it's just just over two isn't it can have lunch there might need to look a bit smarter though smarter for lunch there but I'm sure they'll um, knock you up something for a suitable price it's very, I think it's Michelin star maybe but you'd be able to see your kayak that's for sure bit of shade for 10 minutes mid-afternoon We could camp here. It's about um, this is a guess three, four kilometres from regular block dam. Sometimes you have to uh, forget about the travelling and the how you're getting on time-wise. Just enjoy where you are. Look at that view. been asked to put my rope around this floating bollard. So here's tonight's camp. So this is Friday night. That means I've been a, I started Friday night at 5 p.m. So that must be seven days, isn't it? I don't know. That direction is, if you can quite see it, but the dam is there. Rigu, re, is it? And I came through the dam with a Two other boats. Everyone seemed a bit impatient, but got through safe. That's the first flow. I mean, it is August, so I've got I can't really <laughs> complain. But it's the first time I've seen current flowing since I began. I'm sure it is a little bit, but I mean that is proper flowing now. So and it's come up about. Hmm, 50 centimetres maybe. So I think I've got about 40 kilometres to the next lock which is good because it gives me a day off booking a lock which is a bit stressful to be on. It's not stressful but it's just you know you've come kayaking not to sit on your smartphone trying to <laughs> trying to book a slot in a lock on a, on a website that isn't that smartphone friendly so um yeah, up to now really good. Uh, rubbish day yesterday with the headwinds. Today 
bit of headwinds after about two o'clock, but but you could live with them. You were still making progress. Yesterday they were, they were just strong and relentless all day long. So yeah, seven days in, I don't feel like packing up, going home. I think I'm at about kilometre a hundred. Right, coming up to uh, the Sal de Reg de Reggio. <laughs> <laughs> or something like that. So, hopefully, there's a vape liquid shop here because I'm getting low vape liquid. And uh, if I can't replenish it, then obviously the only thing to do is abandon the trip. So, uh, I've got fingers crossed for this place. Uh, oh, yeah, and get some for dinner for tonight. Right, kayaks paddle up to the steel bar, padlocks around the, uh, the grey rope, metal rope, but the problem is I've left the key, <laughs> I've left the key on top of the kayak in open view for the padlock, so now it's swim time, because I was going to undo the padlock by leaning over the top of the wall. Oh well, best laid pans. That's the, uh, that's the city of Regula. Not bad, not a bad spot. Certainly good for shopping if you, if you need something like a puncture repair outfit, this is probably your best shop between the frontier of Spain and Porto or something like that. That's my guess. Anyway, got all my shopping so I could camp tonight uh, I can feed myself which is good <coughs> back in Ragu a guy who runs the runs the paddleboard and kayak rentals said that um, the wind comes in off up the Atlantic, off the Atlantic up river always <laughs> You can see up there, but that's Sandy Man Pool. Bit of grass to camp under. Toilets at the end, barbecue, fresh water. But what sealed it for me was uh, power. Look at that power. I can blame it now. Ended up staying at the park from about three o'clock till half five. I, I was charging my stuff, my electrics and my plug, but I think being off the water it's like a lot hotter. So I kept dunking myself in the river to uh, bring my temperature down so I didn't think I was in trouble but I thought don't, something doesn't feel quite right so I waited till half five even though it's not as hot today but there you go I suppose we all react different on different days so yeah I've waited till half five uh, while stuff was charging and then I thought um, People were coming coming out to the park then to enjoy the evening, so I thought, oh, I'll get going now. And at the moment, I'm riding in the shadow, which is nice. I think we're doing a right-hand turn here. I'm sure it'll all be fine, though. It's pretty. I thought about camping there. Uh, there's like a flat track across there. I can see the sun glistening off car windows parked up the top, so it's uh, somebody's home. I'm at Pier Marker 91, maybe. Um, this is quite a good one actually. Even I will turn my GPS on and mark. 
so I think this will do for tonight. Hope that wasn't the last person who stayed the night. Evening. So this is camp for tonight. I've even, I've even got like my own little water source, fresh water source. For me to cup of tea in the morning. I mean, it's five star this one. Like a little beach. Don't know how much you can see. I've had to lift the kayak up just in case those uh, tri tricky people at the dam open the sluices. Another punch of repair tonight. Got high hopes for this one. Um, there's the jet boil. Just gastronomy I've had off that this week, unbelievable. There's my ketchup and the hot dog rolls that go with the jet boil. So that's um, last cap, last night's campsite all done. I have to say, probably one of the best ones so far, and I wasn't expecting it. Right, this is about two kilometres down the river from where I camped last night and um, in the book past through Portugal it suggests this is a good campsite for the night which I would agree with looks really nice uh, probably not going to be able to camp at the water's edge in August because last night I'm sure they were this was grand but um, there's people camping back there in the trees I can see so that's a really good option plenty of room even hire a kayak you know if you're not kayaked out by now you, can, you could rent one and have a paddle around bar over the back, super, I mean look, that's the life isn't it? Yes, that's your view from your campsite in the morning, I don't think you complain at that. Right, I forgot to put some blister tape on my thumbs, so I'm going to sort that out now. Right, well that was lunch stop. Smallest piece of real estate probably on the river. But uh, got, gave me a bit more energy. So I looked at my GPS. It says eight kilometres to eight kilometres to the lock. I think the campsite might be just a bit before the lock. So two o'clock now. Probably three <laughs> three hours to do eight kilometres in this wind. But there you go. Nothing else to do. Beautiful day. So I've just been over to the other bank to see if it's less windy than this bank. And it's not. Uh, so I'm staying over this side because you get little pockets of shade and you can just pull over compose yourself tell yourself I can do this I think I've got about maybe five seven kilometers until a campsite just before the lock I think the lock's name is Carapatello something like that uh, so this section in the book, Paddle Across Portugal, says so two in the morning. That's where we came from. That's where we're going. The wind's finally dropping, I think. I don't know where I am, but it's quite pretty, in fairness. There's the Lot Carapateo. 
Now, Google Maps says there is a paying campsite up on this hill. But it doesn't say whether you can get out to the campsite. Well, I don't think there's any access to the campsite for uh, people and boats. This is a bit of a disappointment. It's all fenced for a reason. So, I'm not lugging it. Uh, I've done that before and uh, it's very tiring. Got the lock book for the morning, which is good. So I need to find out what I'm going to do now. Okay, this is the um, the campsite landing spot just before Carapatea Lock, and then you sort of walk your stuff up to. Uh, a nice area up the top under the pines. It is pretty and it looks, I mean it's <laughs> it's stunning the fact it's sort of abandoned. Uh, perhaps no one can make a living out of it and um, no one wants to fund it I suppose, same as everywhere. But it's a beautiful spot and then there is a proper stone bench up the top along here which is really nice. And then I'm camped right, I'm, I've gone out the park at the end and then there's like another little track down to the water. I wouldn't say it's like the best spot in the world, to be honest. If you've got the energy, I'd go up the top. But you can see everything down here. Uh, obviously, I haven't had my breakfast packed away yet. Right, this is where I camped last night, just behind that little log sitting log there's a little flat area enough room for a one-man tent but the main park is the main campsite's up there in the trees you can see the roof of the now defunct bar and toilets which are all locked there is a freshwater tap and that's the only facility but it's really pretty up there and if you're waiting for the lock in the morning there's the lock so i thought well I could do the shower. I'm still very low on vape fluid. I'll try the guest house. So I didn't manage to get in contact with them last night till late, by which time I'd made camp where I just showed you, which is all good, I had a good night. But then I woke up this morning and thought, I've got to solve this vape fluid problem because I, I've got 60 kilometers left. I want to enjoy it like I've enjoyed the rest of it and I don't think I'm going to enjoy it unless I find some vape fluid of some form. It's a sorry state of affairs but that's how I live my life. So I've WhatsApped them back. They said I'm very welcome today, anytime. So I'm going there now, 10.30 in the morning. So, came down the river, went straight past this place thinking, wow, that's nice. Uh, turns out it's the guest house. So, if you find them on Airbnb, uh, I'll put the name up. You can leave your kayaks here, make a booking. Probably need at least two of you for two nights, but... Uh, I'd say it's well worth it because there's a village up there, really pretty village. I went and had like filet million for, for lunch. It was unbelievably good. Office up the top, laundry room, uh, guest house, sleep seven. If only it was as calm as this all day long. Tiny breeze. 
so once I've dropped through the lock it could well be that the breeze is less because I'm dropping I think 38 meters amazing 38 meter drop our father for art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven go to the right side here because uh, it gives them the best opportunity to see me I'm sure they've got cameras but they can look out the window and check on <laughs> okay <laughs> gate's gone up at the back so I'm on my own water's going down to the bang just waiting for the water to equalise Okay, so there's a beach coming up ahead. Uh, I've, I've done virtually no, no rowing since I've come through the lock. That's three, five kilometers maybe. But I'm gonna pull over and have a break and a drink and a snack. Uh, so going through my mind is when I watch the Tour de France and the the athletes, the competitors, get a rest day. They go out riding on their bike. And you think, why would you want to do that on your rest day? But perhaps it makes it easier because yesterday was my rest day. And today, it seems a little bit harder work than I remember it being before my rest day. So one of the great things about this sort of trip is the scenery but you have to bear in mind that you know there can be obstacles on the river and uh, it's always important to be aware of your surroundings in case of you know that's anything that's submerged in the water oh look like this Well, another night's camping done. Got a bit cold in the end. I still haven't quite mastered what is level ground. <laughs> I looked at it and thought, yeah, it looks pretty level. It wasn't. See, 
I should be leaving at 7 a.m., not 9 a.m., like I am, because look how easy it is now. <laughs> but uh, I never quite, I keep, I never quite, well, I certainly never left at 7 a.m., but I sort of feel like, oh, I don't want to rush. But then I, in the afternoons, I pay the price because the wind's up and I, I have to really work hard to get anywhere. But anyway, it's nine o'clock, it's not the end of the world. I've got a good few, well, hopefully a few hours before the winds start. So, looks a pretty good camping spot. Um, they uh, don't are either. I think today is a public holiday, so it's plain to why everybody's out. But I'm hoping here ahead, the book says it's a lunch stop. Oh, I should say after lunch, uh, I got six kilometres with no wind. Yeah, I mean, I did like six kilometres in just over an hour. <laughs> Well, it's not a classic campsite, but it's right in front of the dam. I think I'll, uh, I think it'll have to do. So here we are last morning, maybe, well, hopefully, I think it's day 13 waiting at Chris Starmer lock for that red light to go green. Yeah, feeling pretty good. If you're thinking of coming to do this uh, expedition, obviously there's lots of things that I can't tell you, but one is uh, bring, sort of bring 200 euros in cash with you and a card if, you know, if you're uh, from abroad because although most places take card if they're having a tight week they prefer cash so some places will say they don't take card when they do take card uh, so you always need a bit of cash to get you out of trouble uh, part of doing the thing solo is you have to um, so you have to get to the towns to get food so I've, I've done a few euros in taxis here and there to try and get supplies so that's something to consider and the other thing that's probably the most important is uh, Portuguese, Portugal and Portuguese people are, are very respectful people so if life's not going your way and you're not getting what you want from a person it's not accepted here to get in a strop about it and start demanding. You, you get so much more out of the people here. They're, they're, they're wonderful people, really helpful but you'll get far more by being being kind and thoughtful in, in how you ask for stuff rather than stomping your feet and demanding because it just doesn't go down well here. Here we go then, Porto next stop. Okay, I stopped above the lock. Now seeing what I'm seeing, I would have stopped <laughs> with, the, with the knowledge I would stop below the lock because that looks a lot nicer than where I was. And it looks like there's something in the distance over there as well. Literally 200 metres from the lock. So what I haven't been showing you is about every 45 minutes I pull over, uh, have a vape and this is my last bottle of vape and it's got about 10% left in it. So we're on the last day, but it needs to be the last day because uh, I couldn't imagine going a whole day without any. And um, yeah, I pull over, I have a bit of brand recognition, uh, fire up the World Wide Web and watch a YouTube motorbike video. And then next thing I know, the boat comes by with a big wake and uh, I have to get away from the edge quite quickly before uh, I get rocked against the stones. 
I'm not quite sure where we are at the moment, but uh, must be getting on to halfway to Porto from uh, the, the lock I started at this morning. All going good really, just need a location. Over to my left are likes of what I'd call leisure kayakers, you know, 30 minute rental trips. I don't know what the etiquette is with them, do I acknowledge them or do I blank them? Someone can let me know. Be most grateful. Hi. Well, that, was, that was my first overtake of the trip. I don't know, I don't know if it counts. You could, you could say that he's more of the leisure than, than the true kayak. But still, a win to win. Got a double build this afternoon. Headwind plus incoming tide. Woohoo! We'll go. I guess that's what the young people want nowadays. Thrills, high speed thrills. No denying though, it's a pretty town. See you Porto. That's it, I think the next ramp is my ramp. I think that's the last bridge. Frontera to here. tickets here take you back almost to the start of the river uh, the river perhaps taxi for the last 
30 kilometres and you buy your tickets in, in the office in there, about 15 euros.